Please welcome Ron and Doria Reagan. Will you say a big Kansas City hello to Maureen Reagan and Dennis Ravel? We want Reagan! We want Come on! We want Reagan! We want Reagan! Do it! We want Do it! We want Reagan! Get it! All right! We want Reagan! Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States and Mrs. Reagan. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I wasn't going to, but you talked me into it. Thank you all very much. It was, thank you. It was good this afternoon to be able to say, I'm going to Kansas City, Kansas City, here I come. The, the evening's festivities will soon begin, and I look forward to this debate. I, I relish the chance to I relish the chance to talk about what divides our view of the world from my opponents. We do see the world differently. He represents a school of thought that sees things in terms of limits and endless accommodation. He loves big government and trusts it more than he trusts the people. And his America, America in his America, America is the victim flinching under the blows of history. Well, that's his vision, and we'll leave him to it. Yeah. 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 Well, we've, well, no, we... He has in his background some statements that he's made showing his attitude with regard to the people, but we, we stand for the America of the people. Amen. And we, we have an honest faith in individuals. Our bias is toward the people and away from government. And we believe in encouraging growth and allowing the American people to unleash their daring. We see an America of pride and power, powerful at home, powerful in the councils of the world, powerful in our ability to maintain the peace. Almost four years after we took office, our country is strong again. Our Yes, our aircraft fly again and our ships can leave port. We stand for something and this is good for the world, it's good for the people, and it's good for the prospects of peace. Now, 
My opponent says that he cares about arms control, and I share his concern. I share his concern, but what he may not know is that you can't treat an adversary like a special interest group. And you, you can't just give them everything they want, get a kiss and call it peace. You have to be, you have to be strong, and if you, if you were to successfully negotiate mutually beneficial agreements. Now, my opponent says he cares about freedom, and I believe him. But then he should be rejoicing that under our administration, not one square inch of soil has fallen to the communist control. <laughs> In fact, one nation, Grenada, was actually liberated from a band of communist stuff. You know that exactly one year ago tonight, I directed our armed forces to proceed with planning to send our troops into Grenada. And they had 48 hours to put the plan together, and you know the result. I think that we are really ready. So we can, we can celebrate tonight as, uh, well, an evening for a celebration of freedom. My opponent, in his hunger to succeed this evening, may try to deny some of the positions that he's long held on various questions. Well, he can change the tune, but he can't change the lyrics. Amen. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, we remember the whole record and may hum a few bars later on. The, the American people believe in freedom and in the strength it takes to protect it. And so we go to our work this evening knowing that all is not perfect in the world, but after almost four years of new leadership, much is improved. We don't claim to have remade the world, but we've made it better and safer, and safer than the world the Carter-Mondale administration left us. We, we have put America back on the map. We put it back on the map. I'm going to do something I, I hadn't planned. I haven't told this story for a long time, but I want to. First of all, I want you to realize that our men and women in uniform, and God bless them, I think they're the best we've ever had. Hey. These young people, they, they are the peacekeepers. That's their mission, to keep peace, not to make war. But I have to tell you about this one young fella. He's over with our forces on the East German frontier in Europe, and one of our ambassadors was up there on a trip visiting the troops and all, and as he went back to his helicopter, this young trooper, 19 years old, followed him. And when he got there, the young trooper asked the ambassador if he thought he could get a message to me. Well, the ambassador allowed us how he could. That's what he's there for. But the young fellow then said, drew himself up and he said, Mr. Ambassador, will you tell the president, we're proud to be here, and we ain't scared of nothing. Thank you.
USA forever. Yes. Thank you all. Thank you all for being here, and God bless you all. And I guess now I've got to go to work. Thank you. USA! 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 US